Hello everyone. Welcome to World Class Sunday School. I'm Diane Morgan, your teacher for the day. A special welcome to our Sunday School students and our Sunday School teachers. I especially want to wish you a happy Easter, a happy Resurrection Sunday, whatever title it is that you give this day, I wish for you a very happy, happy, happy day. It, indeed, it is a day worth celebrating because our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, came to this earth for one specific reason. He knew that he would have to die in order for us to live. If you remember last Sunday, Sunday school's lesson, it mentioned why seek ye the living among the dead? Well, we know that Jesus Christ came to this earth to save this dead world from its sin. So we're so grateful that he did. We need to always remember why Jesus Christ came to this earth. During the holiday season of Christmas, we often say Jesus is the reason for the season. Even more during this season of Easter or resurrection, Jesus is the reason for the season because Jesus gave his very life so that we could live. We do well to remember that and to always be grateful and to always honor him. Our lesson title for today is Struggling to Accept. This is the second lesson in this quarter. Our print passage, Luke 24th chapter, 13 through the 27th verse, and the 30th through the 31st verse. This lesson today takes up where our lesson from last Sunday left off. Last Sunday we talked about the women coming to the tomb to only to find the stone rolled away. They were coming to the tomb to dress the body of Jesus because they could not do it that Saturday. If you remember, Jesus was crucified on a Friday and hurriedly taken down from the cross and buried in Joseph's new tomb. So the women could not go on Saturday because that was the Sabbath. So they went early Sunday morning to dress his body and, and give a lot of reverence and respect for someone who was more than do that respect. If anybody was due the respect of having their body anointed, Jesus certainly was. But what a marvelous surprise they found. If you remember, the title of last Sunday's lesson was Amazing Encounters. And that was the most amazing encounter of all, was that the great stone was rolled away and the body of Jesus was not there. So today, we're still talking about an amazing encounter perhaps even more amazing than last Sunday. So let's get started. Our key verse, and their eyes were opened and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. We'll discuss that a bit later as we dive into our chapter. So let's talk about the introduction. Have you ever had an aha moment? An aha moment, also called a eureka moment, is when the proverbial light bulb comes on. When you say, aha, when a problem, a subject matter, or situation that was once incomprehensible and unfathomable finally begins to make sense for you. It's when that light bulb comes on. Maybe you've been puzzled about something. You've been wondering about something. Been trying to figure something out. And all of a sudden, it comes to you. So that's what's going to happen to these men in today's lesson, where they have the greatest aha moment of them all. Our first outline today is the walk to school. That, that sounds like an odd title for an outline, but these men are indeed going to be taking to school today. They're going to learn some things or be reminded of some things that perhaps they have forgotten. Luke the 24th chapter, verse 13. Now on that same day, two of them were going to the village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And remember, just before verse 13 took place, the women, as I told you, had been at the tomb and found it empty. But I didn't tell you the rest of it, that there were two angels there that told the women that Jesus was not there. Not only that, he told the women to go and find the others, especially the 11, the disciples, and let them know that Jesus had risen and that he was no longer buried in the tomb. So let's go back to verse 13. Now on that same day, which is the day that the women had gone to the tomb, which was Easter Sunday, 
Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all things that had happened. They were discussing between the two of them what they had witnessed, that they had just left being with Mary and Joanna, made aware that Jesus was no longer there. But they were going back to their home and they were talking about what they had seen and they didn't see Jesus, they just had been told that Jesus had risen from the grave and was no longer there. And I imagine they were truly amazed because I, I was thinking myself that if I had been present at that time, had been at the cross, had seen Jesus crucified in a most horrific way and taken down from the cross and laid in a tomb, there is no way you would have been able to convince me at that moment that this man was able to rise up and leave the tomb. So I'm sure they were just outdone with what had happened. In verse 15, while they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. So they're walking along an old dusty road. They're heading to this city, their hometown, Emmaus, and, and they're just discussing what had happened, how Jesus had been crucified for their sins, and, I, and I'm sure they were sad and sorrowful because they were following other disciples of Jesus Christ. They were said to be disciples themselves. And then someone else joins them. And that's someone at that moment, they don't know who it is, but they're, they're discussing with that person what has happened. A conversation struck up with the new individual, just talking about the events of the day. Verse 16. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. Je Jesus didn't want them to recognize him at that time. The time would come very shortly when he would allow their eyes to be open. But right now, this is if Jesus is checking them out. He wants to hear what they are saying, what they thought about the events that unfolded at the tomb, with the tomb being empty, and just what they were planning to do now. H how they were planning to spread the word that the Savior had risen. Verse 17, and he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? This is Jesus talking to them. And they stood still looking sad. They, they looked at him like, are, are you kidding us? You don't know what has happened? Well, let us tell you. They're going to fill him in on the events that had just happened a couple of days before. Jesus will show up and walk with us through life that's so important because that's what Jesus is doing right now. That's what happens in our times in life. When, when times seem tough, when it seems as if we don't have a friend, when we can't pay our bills, when our health is not at its best, Jesus will show up and he will walk with us. There are even times that Jesus will carry us. So we need to always lean and depend on Jesus and learn as much about Jesus as we possibly can and incorporate as much about Jesus' life into our own lives so that we can always feel Jesus' presence near us. It is a blessing to know that we are not, not alone in life. Life can be lonely enough without us not having Jesus present in our life. The songwriter says, never alone, no never, never alone. Moreover, the timing of Jesus' appearance should not be lost on us, I mean the Christians. Why? Because Jesus had already told them that if you tear this body down, although it may be crucified, it may be buried in the grave, but on the third day, this body will raise up incorruptible. So they should not have forgotten this. But, but I imagine with everything that unfolded, with them seeing Jesus hung on the cross, with them seeing soldiers casting lots for his uh, robe, for his clothes, for Peter denying him, it's hard to believe that what he said was gonna come true. But those of us who are living in this day and age, in this time, shouldn't have a doubt that Jesus is gonna come again. He isn't gonna have to rise because he's already risen from the grave to die no more. So. It is with us that we can expect compassionate companionship, that Jesus is always going to be with us. He is always going to be compassionate 
and he is always going to provide companionship. And as I was talking earlier in these verses where they were walking along and Jesus appeared, although they didn't know who he was, but they welcomed him. It reminded me of the movie Forrest Gump. For those of you who have seen the movie, think about Forrest sitting on the bench you know, waiting for the bus and different people came along and sat on the bench and as each person came, he would tell them stories, stories about his life. Slow, had a lot to tell, had a great love for his mother and a great love for Jenny. So it reminded me of those scenes with Forrest sitting on the bench and anybody who was willing to listen, Forrest was willing to share the story and life of Forrest Gump. Luke discloses that these disciples are clueless that they are walking with Jesus. In the way Luke writes the verse, we could conclude that perhaps the unseen hand of God was involved in maintaining the anonymity of Christ, in maintaining that their eyes would be closed to what had happened or who was present with them. At, at that moment, God was not ready to reveal that. But we do know that in his own time, when he is ready, God will show up and God will certainly show out. And that's what is going to happen in this case. Nonetheless, what is assured is that in the life of the believer, there may indeed be times when we may not be aware of the presence of Christ. What could happen to cause us to not be aware of the presence of Christ? We might become ill. We, we may have had a love encounter that went wrong. It, it may have been something that happened on the job. Maybe you got terminated unjustly. Maybe you were in a, in a situation where you, you experienced unfairness or harassment, bullying. So there are a number, number of things that can cause us to be thrown off track with how Jesus is our daily companion, how Jesus is always there walking with us. You remember the poem, Footprints in the Sand, where the man said he was walking and, and Jesus walk, was walking beside him and then life got really tough and all of a sudden all he could see was one set of footprints and he got very angry and, and he was asking God, questioning God, where are you during this time when things got rough? And remember what God told him? That was me carrying you. Those were my footprints, not yours. So we do well to remember that in the toughest times of our life, Jesus comes to our rescue and he carries us. He is Emmanuel indeed, meaning God is with us. Finally, in verses 17 and 19, we know Jesus is concerned. Jesus did not just keep company with the bewildered travelers. He also made it known that he was concerned about whatever betided them, whatever was going on with them, whatever made their hearts heavy, whatever made them sad. Jesus was concerned about it. Another reason that Jesus was concerned was because they didn't recognize him. They didn't remember that he said he was going to rise and he was going to be victorious. He was going to be a great king, that he was going to be Lord over all, that, that the grave could not hold him. Death could not conquer him because he was not a man that he should be encumbered by that. So isn't that, isn't that wonderful to know that, that the things that Jesus tells us, he's going to do it. We can count on it. We don't have to wonder. We don't have to ponder. We know that when he says something, it is yes and amen. Our second outline, the need for clear instruction, the pre-assessment. The need for clear instruction, the pre-assessment. Remember in outline number one was the walk to school. So they're about to be school. Jesus is about to give them a true lesson. This is Luke, the 24th chapter, the 18th through the 24th verse. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him. Remember, there were two. They only gave the name of one of them. Not sure why they didn't mention the other person's name. We're not, we don't even know why this is the only occasion in the Bible that the story of these two men occur. We know that nothing happens in the Bible by chance, that every word that's written is God ordained. So for whatever reason, this is in the Bible. We should latch on to it as worth remembering, as worth gleaning from the knowledge of what these two travelers had to say. 
Verse 18, then one of them whose name was Cleopas answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? They're astonished. They're amazed. They can't believe that this man who's caught up with them on the roadside does not know what has happened to their Lord and Savior. They're amazed. Maybe, maybe just a little upset. But because the word had not traveled far enough for this person who seemed to have been coming from the same place they had been to hear what had happened. Verse 19, he asked them, Jesus asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. Look at what they thought about Jesus, that he was a prophet, that he was a prophet. And Jesus was indeed a prophet, but he was the supreme prophet, the prophet of prophets, the greatest of them all. But these two men aligned him with the everyday prophet that they saw in their day. And they were indeed amazed when Jesus spoke to them, declaring who he was. So he asked them, what things? And they, they replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty indeed. So they recognized that Jesus did great things. He did, he did many miracles. He did many wonders. He cured many people. So they recognized what great things he did. Not only that, he spoke a mighty word. He was very, very gifted in oration. He, he was a great teacher. And, and they recognized him for that. And they honored him for that. Verse 20. And how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to, to be condemned to death and crucified him. You notice they took ownership of the priests. Our chief priests. And the leaders handed him over to be crucified. They condemned him to death. They tried it, they crucified him, and they handed him over. It's almost as if they're saying, what a shame. Look at what they did to this great prophet. Verse 21, but we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. See how lost they were? They had hoped he was the one to redeem Israel. Think about us today. There are still people who are waiting for Jesus to come. They don't even believe that Jesus has already been, that Jesus has already died, that he has already been raised. What about you? What about the people you encounter? What about your family? Have you introduced Jesus to anyone today? And they, and they were hopeful. So they had heard about what was supposed to happen. And they were hoping that Jesus was that mighty one that was coming to save Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. So they're, they're saying, man, where were you? It's been, it's been three long days since this happened, and you were not aware? Wow. Well, just think it's been several thousand years, and there are still people who are not aware. I pray that none of you are among that group that does not believe, does not yet believe, that Jesus is the Christ and that he rose for our sins. And whenever we encounter people that don't believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we need to educate them. That's, a, that's our job. That's our duty is to tell them the story of the mighty warrior and the mighty conqueror, Jesus Christ. Verse 22, moreover, some women of our group astounded us. You notice they said some women of our group, not the men of the group, but the women of the group. They were at the tomb early this morning. Verse 23, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. So isn't it wonderful that the women had the courage to go to the tomb? Because had that not happened, Perhaps these two travelers would still be wondering what had occurred after Jesus Christ was buried in the tomb. Or maybe they would have aimlessly just wondered and went back home and not known anything. But we know that God doesn't leave anything to chance. That there was always a plan for what was next. That, that God never just leaves things half done. That there's always going to be that time when we are acquainted with whatever God wants us to know, that he is going to give us our fill 
of what we need to know when it comes to his kingdom and his business. Verse 23, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Remember those angels? They were in shining garments and they spoke to the women and they said to them, why seek ye the living among the dead? So the angels gave the women the revelation that Jesus Christ had risen and that he had indeed gone from the empty tomb. Verse 24, some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Remember, Peter went, but when the women first came, the 11, they didn't believe it. They thought it was just idle talk, that the women were just saying things. You know, oftentimes women, men think that we're just gossiping, that we're just, we're just talking to be talking. But the women had been, had been given the first glimpse of Jesus Christ leaving the empty tomb, going back to his father. He's not gone yet. As we go forth in the lesson, we'll know that he tarried here for a while because he has to meet with his disciples again and he has to introduce us to our company keeper, the Holy Spirit. Reading these verses makes it woefully apparent that these disciples never fully recognized Jesus. And, and we believe that, or well, I believe, they had been around Jesus for a period of time or certainly had some knowledge of what Jesus was capable of because in the verse I just read they said he was mighty indeed and that he had great words so we know that they were aware of who Jesus was and his great capabilities these disciples were as blind to Jesus as they followed him previously as they walked with him to Emmaus Luke tells us that they mistook Jesus as only a prophet they mistook him as only a prophet. Are there any of you who still mistakenly think Jesus is only a prophet and not the true and living God? If you do, I, I pray and I beg of you to make sure that you align yourself with a gospel-based church, with, with, with a, a pastor, a minister, a teacher who knows the word and teaches the word. Don't, don't let yourself be left out because you're not able to recognize Jesus because he's coming back and he's coming back for us, the church, without a spot or a wrinkle. Our third outline, class is in session. Remember, we've been to school, there's a need for clear instructions, so now class is in session. This is Luke the 24th chapter, 25, 26, 27 verse. Verse 25, then he said to them, Jesus talking now. At first the two men headed to Emmaus was talking, but now Jesus has taken over the conversation. Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. They've been, Jesus knows they've been educated, but he said, Jesus called them a fool, that they were foolish. I wonder how they felt for a stranger to come along, somebody they didn't recognize, and say, you are foolish. Verse 26, was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? He had to suffer those things. There was no way around it. And he told them that he would have to suffer brutally, but he would be raised victoriously on the third day. And it's amazing that either they forgot, they didn't believe it, they were certainly astonished and amazed that it actually happened, but it did. So, so we shouldn't be left astonished and amazed. We shouldn't be left out of Jesus' plan for us. We should make sure, make sure, make very sure that we get to know Jesus, that we recognize his face, that we recognize his voice, and that we don't leave him out of our lives. 27, Jesus is teaching. Cause, cause class is in session. Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, Jesus interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. Jesus went way back, way back. So when we read in, in, in the scriptures in the Old Testament, it talks about Jesus. When we read in Isaiah's day, read in uh, Moses' day, we read the prophets of old, we know that Jesus is coming. Even when we get to the New Testament, we talk about 
John the Baptist who said one is coming of whom I'm not even worthy to latch up his sandals. We are not worthy to latch up his sandals, but we certainly are worthy because we've been bought with the greatest cost of all, which was Jesus' life. We certainly are worthy to carry the story. So Jesus begins by telling disciples, these two men, that they're foolish because they don't recognize him. Although they've been in the presence of his deeds, in the presence of his word, they, they've even known about the crucifixion, they were there, but now they do not recognize him. And we can say we understand that because it would be a hard thing when you saw him die, when you saw him taken down from the cross and buried. So we can give him a small pass, just a small one, but we know that Jesus is going to make sure that they are hip and know who he is. So the fourth outline, the bell is rung and class is dismissed. So school has been led out by Jesus Christ. Luke, the 24th chapter, the 30th through the 31st verse. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. So they invited Jesus to go home with them and Jesus did and he ate bread with them and he, he uh, blessed it but then he was finished he had done what he had come to do which was make sure that they recognize who he is so make sure today that you recognize who Jesus Christ is in your life so again happy Easter happy Resurrection Sunday